Hey, here's a staggering number for you. Do you know that there are almost a half a million caregivers in the state of Mississippi that are providing an estimated 400 million hours of care? Yes. And they need help. And you're back up. AARP of Mississippi. Yes. Kimberly, how are you? Good Doing to see well. you again. Good to see you. The state director for Mississippi AARP. And that is something that um, AARP is, is very much involved in. Yes. And those are uh, family caregivers. Yes, yes. Uh, caregiving is, is a huge initiative for AARP on the national level and, of course, here uh, on the state level. Uh, we have uh, volunteers who are trained to conduct caregiving workshops, uh, caregiving seminars. We also advocate uh, for caregiving initiatives, whether it's on the state level or the federal level. Uh, currently, right now, on the state level, we're working towards a caregiver tax credit. Mm -hmm. um, as you just said, you know, in Mississippi, we roughly have about 470, 100,000 um, caregivers, you know, and that is care that they're providing without any compensation. And many times these people are using their own benefits to right. help the loved one uh, that, that is impaired or, or needs, the, needs the care given. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they have to be absent from work, you know, and so it, it's a lot that goes into being a caregiver. Um, you know, and so on the federal level, we work towards more federal stuff like caregiving leave. Uh, in, in fact, uh, ARP as an employee, we have some benefits that most people don't have. We actually do have caregiving and leave benefit. Really? So it, yeah, we've got so many hours every year that's strictly just for caregiving to where you can be off of work to provide care to whether it's an elderly parent, uh, you know, uh, you know, a child, a sibling, or even a child. Mm -hmm. You know, we because you know again we, we say we believe in this, and so we have to treat um, the staff accordingly. Right. Uh, but everybody doesn't have that. And so on the federal level, we're working towards, you know, legislation that, we're, that will provide some type of real caregiving uh, leave, uh, you know, for everyone where there's a federal benefit. On the state level, the caregiver tax credit is really important to try to help, you know, alleviate uh, some of the burdens. It, it still won't be a lot, uh, mm -hmm. but some of the burdens. Uh, because when you think about what caregivers do, you know, many times they have to organize, you know, coordinate doctor visits. Right. Uh, not only just the scheduling, but getting the person there. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes the person is not like you can just walk them to your car. So sometimes it's, I need a medevac van. You know, I need special equipment to get this person from point A to point B. Uh, it's coordinating their medications. It's coordinating, uh, you know, if you need a nurse at the home. Right. You know, so it's a lot that goes into caregiving. And, and many times when, when you see caregivers, we, we begin to worry about the caregiver. <laughs> because, yeah. uh, you know, I, I'm sure you know we, we've all had stories. I think about people in my church to where the caregiver got more ill over time right. than the person they, they were ran taking themselves care down. of. They just because ran, they ran themselves, ran themselves out. Out, they would never step away. They would never take a break. And that's what we do in some of our workshops when we have our caregiving workshops is to teach the caregiver. Uh, we also have a manual that we give about prepare to care that helps you really understand the things you need to get in order, the information that you need to all have in, in one place that you can have quick resources, but also how to take care of yourself, right. how to know when, when you need a day off, how to know when you need a break, and to have respite care for yourself because that's very important. You know, you can't go down because who no. you go down, then the people that you're responsible for, who will, who will take care of them, so. Yeah, and I mean, and, and the, th the great thing about it, I know AARP or uh, even uh, are usually you know 50 and older. Yes. But it, before that, you need to start thinking about that, as you, you said, do. You because do. those those that are, of us that are uh, yes. well, not me, but those that are like 40 yes. are taking care of a family that are like uh, 70, right. 60, 70, uh, and even 80. You know, as you get on up. That's so right. That's it, right. When you become that caregiver yourself. These are very important things These to know. These are very important things to know. Uh, that's what we call the sandwich generation. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm 48, and so I'm considered to be in the sandwich generation because I have children that are 17, 10, and 8. So I'm still raising young children. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in the prime of my career, so I'm very busy with work. Well, but my parents are 80, uh, and one of them uh, in particular is, is quite ill, unfortunately, at the moment. So I'm oh, hurt my mother's caregiver. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a balance of work, three kids, <laughs> you know, taking care of myself, right. and then my mother, whether it's balancing, you know, all the care that she needs, who's going to give the care, you know, if I travel, I've got to have somebody in the home, it's the medication, so it's a lot that goes into caregiving, mm -hmm. so it's not something that, that's minor, that, you know, people are just trying to get away with something. Mm -hmm. I mean, people are providing true care, and most caregivers really become nurses themselves. Right. I mean, even when you have a home health nurse, that nurse teaches you how to do certain things, Right. so you learn how 
how to do wound care. You learn how to give medication. You know, you learn how to take vitals or, or do, you know, uh, their glucose testing. And so it's a lot. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we, we want to we want to have some things in place to help those caregivers uh, like a tax credit and some other benefits. But we also want to really make sure people really learn how to do it because right. we kind of think you're just supposed to know, but you really don't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it, it's good to start thinking about it even at 30, you know, start thinking about what would happen if I had to take care of parents and or whomever, you right. know, how would I navigate this? And that's what we do with a lot of our tools and resources. We help you learn how to navigate that and get educated and learn how to do it. We got about two and a half minutes left. Talk about the GAP Act. Yes, the GAP Act is something that we worked on last year that we got passed. And it really provides some extra protection for um, more of those older uh, adults that, that may not, you know, be as cognizant anymore or as sharp in their mind. And so they may be more vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And so it helps us have court appointed people that can help oversee their affairs. But it gives special protections that those people who are appointed by the court, that they have to be held accountable. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they someone has to oversee what they do for an individual. It, it used to be a little too easy for kind of anybody to come in and say that they're going to be in charge of somebody. And so this made stuff a little a little stronger and, and provided more protections and more oversight to when you're taking care of somebody else's financial affairs in particular. And that's one of the good things about uh, Mississippi AAR, AAR, AARP of Mississippi yes. is the fact that, um, as you said, you, if something all of a sudden happens yes. and you, oh, to a loved one, older parent, right. something like that, and you don't know what to do as far as you know training and all that. Right, right. That's where y'all come in. You that's say, where we, we come can help in. You. We can help you. You know, we can train you. And we have you so have workshops. many workshops. We have yes. so many resources. You know, if you look on our website, if you call us, it, it, there are books that we can send you. Mm -hmm. I prepare to care our booklet is really invaluable. Mm -hmm. uh, that that really helps you. And so we're, we're here to help. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. And every year, of course, when we have the senior fair yes. in Biloxi, y'all are there. It's going to be the end of I think September 28th. It's last Tuesday yeah, yeah. in September. It's going to be. Here here uh, this year. So go ahead and make your plans now, whether you are a senior or a caregiver or a caregiver is, or a so, caregiver. And, and even if you're things. younger, we have millennials that are caregivers. So you oh, know, yeah. you've got college students that are taking care of, of parents that need, you know, help. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, so come learn from us. Or you have grandkids yes. that are taking care of grandparents because yes. the parents are no longer around. Right. Absolutely. So, I mean, there are so many different variables that you yep. have to look at. So again, what you can do is is go online, go to the website online there, uh, call the phone number, and yep. uh, you know, and if you're if you're interested in one of the workshops, they're listed on there as well. Yes. Uh, you can call that 866-554-5382 and find out where there'll be a workshop mm -hmm. uh, near you and uh, and get some help with that as as well. That's so right. That's awesome. Always a pleasure, Kimberly. Thank good you to for see having you. me. Good to Always see you. Always, it's good to see you again too. Again, if you are uh, a family caregiver or probably are going to become one, you can get some great help from AARP Mississippi. Uh, give them a call or go online and get all kinds of information for them.